I've come across an image. It's titled The Sized. And it says, well, there is an, a picture and it's uh, Muhammad Ali, the American, African-American boxer, world-renowned champion. And I believe this uh, image and the accompanying message is, um, is a message in itself to the melanated beings of Earth. It seems to me to be part of the psychological and spiritual warfare that has been going on for generations of indigenous lives. It says, did you know, Muhammad Ali attempted to lift 76-year-old former world bantamweight boxing champion, Johnny Coulon. He had a famous trick where he put his finger on the lifter's neck and wrist, making him unliftable. The results were always the same. Regardless of how much he strained and struggled, he couldn't budge Coulomb from the floor. And you can see in the face of a champion, the, 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 the appearance of defeat. And for the whole world, it's like humiliation. Because what I did notice from 17,000 people who had liked or put emojis on there, 7.2k shares basically there are people laughing people are laughing right because they have not learned about like pressure points right it's kind of like that's why i don't like magic i don't like because it's all illusion it's all tricks they're tricksters they're scammers any people who are of that nature that is the nature that is below the evil nature right they won't fight with you say mano a mano 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 a mano they won't fight fairly you won't see man against man woman no they have armies going in to decimate people who don't even know they're at war okay people don't even know they're at war people trying to be friends and friendly people even go to procreating they don't realize they're sleeping with the enemy why, why do you think they would make that they, they said hey hey you can do that do that to their champion and show them show them that our bantam weight can beat their heavyweight. And you know, Ali, right? S was sting like, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Well, in here, he's being stung by a bitch named Johnny Coulon. Johnny Coulon, look at that. He has his fingers. He's using the pressure points. He's applying his finger to the pressure points. And... Um, and look at the look at the look on his face. Look at the look on his face. You got it. You got to, you got to look deeper into imagery and, and and messages. It's a lot beneath the surface that is missed by many black people, which is why they have taken so long to wake the f up. Wake up. I was wanting to talk about. Oh, let's see this now. In the world there is an impression of black poverty and lack because that's what that is largely shown. And when they show a black person of means, it's usually money gained from, you know, being a sports um, athlete, uh, a champion, being a celebrity, a so-called star in Hollywood or wherever they are in the U.S., they are in theater well those don't really become very wealthy do they it's the actors on the screens the screen actors and those are the ones you tend to worship idolize <laughs> and those are the same ones who lead you astray the churches have also led you astray and this last two years were a really revealing um, is revealing to see how easily bought and sold are your pastors and ministers. There was a, a, a funeral in Nigeria. One of my friend's father passed away. I don't even believe he made it to the age of 60 and he died. This man was heading a church that has many other pastors. So that's big church. You can tell the way they live. They live in a big house. You know, this is not common the way they live is not common 
where they live in that part of Nigeria. Yes, people live in opulence and wealth, but most people are poor. So when the pastor is buried, he's, um, they show the pictures. They made a big deal about it. They spent millions and mi tens of millions. How much? I don't remember how many millions, but it appeared that this guy, the son of this deceased pastor, is looking to me to donate money to pay for Because these funerals, they cost a lot of money. And I'm thinking that would have been an opportunity to teach, to learn about spending, investing, and just throwing money away. And why do black people repeatedly throw money away? So you are in the spirit of, you know, um, you're mourning, but you're also showing off. So the pastor had a golden casket. And all the, it's just they had the bells and the whistles, man. It's like, whoa, somebody very important passed away. Pastor, pastor passed away. So young, too. Hmm. Anyway, his son... And that's the thing I noticed about, I'm sorry, I hate to put that in there, but Libra, I don't know what it is about Libras. Libras love to come to me to beg for money, to ask for money, to cry for money. Libra will cry to me for money and they have more money than me. That is wickedness. That is, I believe, this sign, they should be called Libra, L-I-E-B-R-A. Because they're so superficial, they're so vain and conceited and all they care about is the materialism. Who is like that? Materialistic? Taurus? Leo? But there's a difference in their materialism. And I'm not going to get delve any deeper into that. But how am I going to donate to help bury a pastor who lived so much better than me? I'm there to help those who are truly in need. You know, so the son showed me, he tried to get money from me by showing me him helping uh, at the, at the, um, at the orphanage. The poor little children, they, they needed beds. They needed, not beds, mattresses to sleep on. They were crying. They were, oh my God, it was such a sad thing. I said, yeah, I would like to help. But the thing is, there are all so many others trying to get money from me. And I have my own life to live and to pay my own bills. So, especially with this crazy two past years of, of, of us being imprisoned, I, my, my earnings have really not been significant enough to be sharing as I have done in the past and they could not understand these African guys could not understand that I could not give money to them this birthday this Christmas this New Year's this thing I couldn't and they refused to ac accept it like they sowed seeds to grow a money tree in my backside and I can always go and um well, I can take funds out of there and give to them. They have no heart, it seems. They're cold. All day, they, they're one-minded. It's like money, get the money, get the money. And I'm encountering so many black males from the U.S., African-Americans and African males, who think nothing to ask me for money. And if they're not begging for money, they, they want to marry me. They want to marry me because, you know, they want to come to Canada. My God, it's, it's it's a bit much. So you all are teaching your black males. You're teaching them nothing. Now, I have brothers. My brothers are productive. They're taking care of their families, their children, you know. And so that's these are role models that we want for black communities, black families, black children. Black children deserve to have parents who are caring for them. Instead, all you're doing, all of you, are, all you're doing whether or not you have a man, you make sure you have a child or two or three or four or more. So you're not planning the children. You just, well, I have a pussy. I'm going to trap a man because these guys are not strong. They are weak-minded and they're easily distracted by shiny things. Look at my gold, the drip. Look at my jewels. Look at my diamonds. Guys are more conceited and vain than more than males today are more conceited and vain than women. And in fact, many of these males today are hating women, envious, jealous, wanna be us. And that's a damn shame because we need men, not boys. I appear to have more than most because, well, I have more than most. I have in my heart God and God is the most. 
and you're choosing to walk away from God. You're trying new things because new things are presented to you on their mainstream media, in your face, on the screens, what you see. You see black uh, rappers and others flashing jewelry, flashing a lifestyle, flashing bottles of Henny and Patron and uh, Patron and, and, and all the other, you know, purchases they make that enrich their lives, bank accounts, pockets, estates of those people who hate us. But you're not seeing it. All you're seeing are the labels and you think you're going to wear these labels. So this guy was begging me for money, crying. I don't even want to read the shit he sent me. I didn't even answer. I don't know how to answer this shit. But he's wearing, him and his brother, I see they have Louis Vuitton uh, slides on. They're wearing Louis Vuitton slippers, okay? First of all, I would not pay. Even Let's let's say they, they would say, oh, no, they're not real. They're knockoffs. Well, why the hell would you promote that brand? You're an African. You're a freaking African. Nigerian, in fact. They hate you. So why the hell are you wearing Louis Vuitton on your feet? You and your brother. So if I see you wearing Louis Vuitton on your feet, I think you don't need my money. You don't need my money because I can't afford to buy designer labels and I don't. And honestly, I don't even want to. Like, I don't want to. Being unable to afford means that is not important to me to wear that brand. But you, I'm sorry, this is, the wood stove is very noisy. <laughs> I'm downstairs at the wood burning stove. I have a friend in Nigeria who is a tailor. He makes clothing. I have another friend whose father is is, is a tailor. He, he makes clothing. You know, um, we have to support our local talent. Buy from our local seamstresses and tailors. They're doing such great work. I have another friend in Nigeria. He is a shoemaker. And you know, to see the wickedness of the world, when three different Nigerians... They all had gone to school around the same time. And one of them, he started a shoemaking business. And I was trying to help him to promote his brand. And so I offered, at, on three different occasions, three different Nigerians. I said, listen, my friend Greg is selling shoes. And I like, I like some of his stuff. And just to help him, to help him out. And he can get better the more you buy and he can improve and get better equipment. And, you know, how about I buy a pair of shoes from Greg's company and have him sent to you wherever you are in Nigeria. He's in Lagos. And do you know that every single one of the Nigerians that I was offering to pay to buy them shoes from a fellow Nigerian and every single one of them rejected my offer they said no no thank you no thank you they'd rather have the money because with the money they can go to the market and buy for the amount that the nigerian product would cost they would get a hell of a lot more chinese so when you'd make these kinds of comments it shows me your lack your brain is not functioning you might think you're smart because you went to school and studied and oh look at you you're top top of the 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 the, the Top of the heap of your team, you're the one they look up to, you're great. But when it comes to extending greatness to others, you are bankrupt. You cannot see. They are not teaching you in Nigeria to love each other, to love yourselves. They are just teaching you to love money, to be greedy. That's why the scamming, scammers, thieves and liars are so abundant in Nigeria. There's so many of them. They're not even helping their own fellow classmates, schoolmates. Why Why is it? Because that's how they've been taught. They've been programmed. They, I mean, even their government is making them suffer. Why? Because the G7, who are heavily invested in exploitation of African resources that they've done for generations it continues they continue to drain the continent of africa while continuing to call africans poor needy stupid and all the other things but come on if you are kind of like unwilling to raise 
your own people, to uplift them, to assist them. And you're looking foreign, you're looking over to others to help you. You have to help yourself. You help yourself by helping your fellow man. And if you can't afford to buy the shoes from my friend, and I have the means to help him and you, you reject his shoes and you will say you would rather have a bunch of cheap shit from China. And this is how most of you silly Negroes have made China so wealthy. As I speak, how many of you are online ordering, purchasing to have delivered to you made in China products that are inferior and that's why you're getting it because it's cheap and you're cheap and it, it's a vicious cycle of cheap, cheapness. And yet you want to wear European labels. You want to wear designer labels. Does that make any sense? So designer labels cost a lot of money, right? And your fellow man trying to build a business, he must not rob you with his pricing, but he must also live. He has to exist. As far as I know, I don't believe he, um, he succeeded in building his brand. Because his own people refuse to be gifted with his products. Even if they're not paying for it. They said to me, I would rather have the money. I can go to the market. For the amount I can get of you, or for one of his, I can get four of those. Wow. This is what you have become. Black people, this is not looking good at all. Desmond Tutu, who was hobnobbing with heads of state and millionaires and billionaires. I saw him with Richard Branson in, a, in an infinity pool, very close. I saw Richard Branson in another shot, um, putting a, planting a big kiss on the cheek of Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu is hobnobbing with um, elites, right? Uh, and money bags and movers and shakers. And in the end, he chose to display his, his 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 burial his his he was it he was a pine a plain pine box as opposed to the pastor in in opulent golden casket and begging for money to help pay for all this ostentatious display of wealth of a pastor and you're out just following these pastors who are fleecing you all the 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent that the congregation is is uh, donating regularly you're not saving that for your burials pastors you have to leave your children burdened with debt because that's what it is. They've not paid for the damn funeral. That's why they're begging me for money, right? But I can't, I can't in good conscience, conscience because in Africa are many children in need. The pastor did not need a freaking golden casket. Be very mindful when you approach me with nonsense because it is nonsense. I will not pay to bury a pastor. And furthermore, Desmond Tutu was not buried. So I don't even know why they bothered with that freaking casket. Okay? I guess they have to show. Everything is a freaking show. But what I heard is, I didn't, I have the information in my phone, but I can't be bothered to get it because you can get it yourselves. But Desmond Tutu supposedly is in the Vatican somewhere, in the basement, I don't know. But that's where they put his body and they use some uh, chemical, some solution, I don't know, some process. This is new and they said it's environmentally, um, sound to bury this way it's a modern way of burial that you're not cremating that you're not burying in the ground but you are basically evaporating the body or dissolving the body in some kind of i don't know acid or something but that's what they're doing now and i don't know what implications there are for us as you know spiritual beings inhabiting a human body that's what i was told which is why i was able to levitate and I was shown visions and I have been taken up to the height of the mountain, shown that I can fly. I was shown below, if I choose to go below, I will perish on the rocks. And many of you are choosing to perish on the rocks because you are not opening your eyes to the vision and you know, you're not learning the lessons and you are choosing to go low while I continue to go high. I am Domina Della Pai. Mystery Sasha Storm, thank you for listening. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, or not. It's all good. Good day to you.